What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Durbin Compound. Um, today we're going to work on something that I've been thinking about for a long time. I'm going to make a, a dolly for my uh, wash buckets. So you always have your three bucket method. Uh, one for wheels, one for rinse, one for your actual wash bucket. Um, there's so many options out there of uh, wash buckets and, and dollies and, and kits and stuff like this. Some people is, is as expensive as $350 for three 60 gallon buckets and the dollies that come with them. If you look for the dollies with the wheels that just go around the around the five gallon bucket and have like six casters on it, it's like uh, $50 or $40. I think they're $39.95 for most bucket dollies. And then you have to tie them all together. So my idea was, let's go to try to do this as cheap as humanly possible with a lot of stuff that I already had. So I'm all about repurposing things around here and when stuff just seems to uh, take the back seat to priority and something, for instance, like this detail cart. This detail cart was bought from Harbor Freight a long time ago. I don't even remember how much I bought it for, but I had ultimately bought it for my detailing supplies and everything that I needed to wash a car. So at the old house, this is all I had. I had a big 80 by 100 barn with a rough concrete floor and this is all that I had. I just rolled this around. I had my fluorescent lights on the front of it. I have a little switch to control the, the power to it. I had an extension cord that was hooked up. So obviously you plug in that extension cord over the wall. You can go around with the cart and um, it has an outlet here on the side so you can plug in, uh, plug in your, your uh, polisher, whatever you're doing. Also have the lights for direct side light on the car. I used that for a while, about a year and a half, I used this cart. So when I moved into this garage, I obviously put up a shelf for all my detailing supplies and I have everything kind of in short order, it's right here. So this cart ultimately became a shelf, of just collecting a bunch of crap on it. So I decided that I'm going to take it apart, I'm going to use the top for, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this top piece and I'm going to create, I'm going to put wheels on the top piece and I'm going to use that for my uh, steel storage. So I'm going to keep the handle on the top piece and take the legs off of it and use this as a steel storage down in my shop because I have another snap-on cart that I'm using for steel storage and I literally just stack in uh, scrap metal on top of it. I think I'm going to use this for scrap metal and then I'm going to take this, I'm going to bust this down to the bottom, the just the bottom of it. So I'm going to use the casters and the bottom shelf of this, of this uh, cart here. So my grand idea was this is big enough for a lot of different things. So as I have this cart, we're just using the bottom half of it. I'm probably going to do a time lapse video and go through exactly how I set this up. But I'm going to have hoses hooked up to each bucket. So as I go through this, I'll show you how I build it. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll fast forward and then go into a little bit of detail about certain steps and then fast forward and then uh, a couple more details and so on and so on. But uh, I'm going to have leader hoses to it. I'm going to have one leader hose out. I'm going to do this. This is a, uh, these are a couple things that I had laying around. So I'm thinking about, you know, what I had laying around or I had stocked up that I can use that is otherwise going to sit in a box somewhere. So I'm going to use as much as I could humanly possible. Um, I spent $40 on the rest of um, just odds and ends of things that I needed to put this together to be a quick disconnect. So the grand, the, the grand plan is this is going to hook up on the end of the cart. It's a four-way um, garden hose adapter that I already had. So one of these is going to be a quick disconnect for a sprayer, a sprayer nozzle. So you're going to have this hooked up to the cart. You're going to have a sprayer nozzle with one, with one liter hose. It has a uh, five foot liter hose. You're going to have a sprayer nozzle for spraying off wheels and stuff or filling, or filling the or, uh, foam in the buckets up. I'm going to use that. And then the other three bungs are going to be for shorter hoses that go into each bucket. So my plan was we're going to ultimately put a bung on the bottom of each bucket. And so I'm going to have a quick disconnect that hooks into the bucket. And so I can have all three buckets sitting on the cart. And one thing that, that always happens is 
when you're filling the bucket, you put your you put your hose down in the bucket, and as it fills up, it wants to come out of the bucket, and fling everywhere. Um, and I'll, I'll I'll show an example just right here, like this. So you got to see exactly how it flips out of the bucket and just gets freaking everywhere and then you're pissed off because it, it didn't stay in the bucket while you were trying to fill it. So you can use a, a, a fire hose attachment, which I have one of those. Got a lot of junk. I don't know where my fire hose attachment is. Oh, it's in here. So yes, you can use a fire hose attachment. This one's from AutoZone, I think a long time ago. Yeah, it's AutoZone one. Um, you can put that on the end of your hose, and yeah, it has the weight to just hold it down in the bucket. But what I wanted was an easier way to fill the buckets while I'm doing other things. So instead of filling one bucket at a time, I'm gonna have the option to fill all three at once. So I'll put my soap in my three buckets. I'll be able to put, put my quick disconnect from my garden hose straight onto the end of this, fill all three buckets evenly all at the same time and then then I can take my leader hose and get my foam going you know ultimately when you fill from the bottom and there's soap it's not going to foam that much and one of the problems when you fill your wash buckets is you're spraying your hose in there and then it foams up over the top and of course you stop and then when it foams down you only have like a quarter of the bucket filled and you're like ah now i gotta refill it some more so you're filling it up and then it foams over again and you're only about half full so there's so many different ways that people do it some people will fill the bucket halfway dump their soap in and then fill it the rest of the way and foam it up whatever you want to do but i am doing the three attachments all at once so that my buckets can can fill all up and then i will foam them so that's just what i'm going to play with of course I'm cutting a hole in the, each bucket, so this is gonna be a little interesting. I'm gonna put a bung in each bucket that's a quick disconnect. So I'm gonna epoxy it around the bucket. And then, of course, when I have my quick disconnect bung sticking out of my bucket, I will have, a, I will have another uh, male di or a female disconnect that goes over it that is a plug. So I can take it off of my cart and I can plug it up and then I can use that bucket elsewhere. This bucket is not useless, I can use it on, I can carry that one around the car and it has the it has the plug in it already. So I'll just put my quick disconnect plug on there if I'm trying to take my bucket off the car. So that's my grand plan. Let's go ahead and uh, do a little uh, time lapse video here and we'll get this thing torn down and taken apart and get down to the nitty gritty. So thankfully I had 
a bunch of hardware. I'm gonna have to go up to 3 8 holes, so I need to, first of all, make sure that my 3 8 will go in, in here, which they're gonna be okay. Uh, they'll go into my casters, but I need to make all the holes in the base bigger so they'll take my 3 8 uh, bolts that I'm gonna put in. So, and I got washers as well to hold the casters. So just a little update on that. I'm gonna go through here and screw, screw these all in or uh, make the holes bigger, um, take all these things out, get the top of this out of the way. I'm gonna dry up the floor here because uh, working in the water <laughs> that I sprayed everywhere earlier is a little annoying. So we're gonna move all this crap out of the way and then uh, we'll get to working on this base. So this should work out pretty well. Let's do this. All right, so another reason why I chose this cart um, to use this as my, as my bucket dolly is because this bad boy is sturdy. So this is a completely braced shelf. Um, it even is concave a little bit so that um, it takes a little bit of extra weight as well. And these casters are heavy duty. So I was looking at building a steel one, I was looking at building a little steel frame, um, kind of a minimalistic cart. Um, and just do it in corrugated metal or whatever and it just didn't seem like it was it wasn't going to be cheap for one and I already had this laying around so I've literally got no money real really right now in it um, it's kind of a, a weird way to think about it but I really don't have any money right now as we speak into it I bought this car years ago and it was just collecting dust and dumb stuff on it so I'm just uh, repurposing it, so it's nice. So the only thing I don't like about this cart is that these wheels, there's two fixed wheels and there's two uh, swivel wheels. So yeah, it could be a little bit better on that front, have all four swivels, but not really going to be the end of the world. So let's go ahead and bolt these, uh, bolt these casters on. here uh, uh, just regular hex bolts instead of uh, some carriage bolts um, the awesome thing about this cart is since it's concave it's higher in the middle so that when I lay this down and water gets on it uh, water is going to run towards the outside so I'm going to put drain holes along the outside to just drain off onto the ground so the cart rolls around pretty pretty nicely um, really quiet I love those rubber casters um, I got the, the hardware, I didn't even have to go anywhere for it. Um, if, you, if you've seen my shop tour, I have organizer bins. Um, I got to fill up a lot of my hardware when one of the local big, big box stores was going out of business. So a place called Anderson's in Ohio was going out of business and they were selling their hardware for like a dollar a pound. And I don't think I, I, don't, I, I still think that I didn't get enough. Um, I must have taken two or three shopping carts out of there, probably six to seven hundred pounds of, of, uh, of hardware out of there. And I just literally have bolts and nuts and stuff stocked up. And it saves me on little projects like this where I don't have to look, run to Lowe's or Home Depot and try to find a bolt that, that is going to fit that's kind of the same size. So I, I can just run down to the shop, um, see what fits, and call it a day. So here's my, here's, uh, my project. Uh, coming into fruition right now. So I'm going to have my buckets. I can have my buckets all three in a line. I don't know what I'm going to do in a line here like this. Um, it certainly has enough room to do all three of them in a line. I don't know if I'm going to stagger them like this uh, and then run my hoses in between. But 
I'm going to have my one of these. One of these is obviously going to be the what I said before, the spray hose. I'm going to have the spray nozzle on here. So everything I use has quick disconnect fittings. They're they're not that expensive. Uh, I like the ones from Lowe's. Uh, they have a little rubber or plastic outside and they fit universally for the most part. The ones at Menards do not. So um, just, just to keep that in mind. So I got my little spray, spray nozzle. I'm gonna be able to spray tires off, spray in the buckets as well. Uh, I think I might, what I might do is put my, put my four, I might put this back here like this somehow on the edge of my cart and brace it up somehow so I have uh, each bucket uh, each bucket ran off I'll have the hose respectively you know going into each bucket on the cart and then when I need to I'll come over with my garden hose when I'm ready to fill it like so I'll come over with my garden hose and then just click right into my cart and then I can fill up however many buckets I want I'm just filling up one bucket, I want to leave it on the cart, then I just kick on that one, and then I have the sprayer, so I don't have to take this off and spray in my bucket, I can just take it off here and spray in my bucket here, or spray the hook wheels off, and I can keep this, keep this cart uh, pretty much hooked up. So the other, the other idea I had was I was going to put a hole in the side of, a hole in the side of this, the, the cart base here and I was just going to run this in and have this kind of uh, bolted down somewhere or strapped down in the cart somewhere so I can have my leader hose and have my other I'm gonna have another leader hose that hooks up to that hose instead of hooking it straight into here and have a lot of pressure on however I mount this what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put another leader hose on here so that I hook this up to my garden hose, and then this comes through the cart edge and into this piece here. And then this can be bolted down, or I think I might just strap it down. It has a little, it has a little bracket on the back side, but I don't know if that's going to be able to work for me. Um, I might, uh, just depending on you know how these throws go, I don't have a lot of uh, space to be able to to mount it. So. I want to still be able to utilize the, the quick disconnect so I can't keep it down as much as I want to. Um, I don't exactly know how I'm going to go about it. I might run a metal strap through here over the base. I might grind this down, grind this, uh, this little mount down and put two straps over this so that it's a little thin strap and it will hold it tight to the, tight to the cart. Once I get everything hooked up, this will be static, and I won't have to disconnect this. And I can pitch it up if I want to a little bit, have it strapped down, and then to here. I think that might be my best option. Another option would to do, was to do the, do the bone for this through the edge, so I cut my hole, and then I run my, I run my uh, hose thing through a little bit, and then just tighten this down and use it as a nut. And then it's hanging off the edge of here. That might work. Um, I think that that's going to be a little bit uh, taxing on the actual uh, plastic, but on the connector as well. Uh, and it might not seal up very well. So that's something that I'm gonna have to mull over here, figure it out, and then I'll cut my uh, cut my hoses and stuff to length, and I'll show you that. So let's figure out how we're gonna mount this plan it out a little bit better. I think I absolutely am going to stagger the buckets. I think that would be my best option to stagger the buckets. Uh, I don't know. So we're going to figure it out here. Maybe I'll stagger my buckets like so. That gives me a lot more room to have room to run hoses. But if I'm working on wheels, I have to turn this around. So I'm working with the, with the uh, 
with the, the wheel bucket, then I can do these two close together, I can do it like that. So I have my two buckets for wash and rinse, and then I have my wheel bucket, and then I have a lot of room on the side for other stuff like putting, putting the tools down or putting sprays or something like that. So I'm going around the car. I'm always hanging like stuff like the wheel cleaner on the side of the bucket. It can sit on the cart, so I have some room for that. I can I can uh, use it as a little storage area for other other brushes and things. We just got to plan out where the heck this thing's gonna go. My first idea was to just have a hose and then tee off of the hose a couple times, and then just have one one um, just one you know valve and kick it on, and that that'd be that'd be it. But if you take off one bucket, if you do that and you have one hose and then you have a T and then you decide you want to take off one of these buckets, well now that is wide open, all the water from these buckets is going to come out that hose. So I would need to get a plug on both ends. So this is probably the best thing that's going to work so that I can turn off and on each bucket and control the controls to each bucket. And I had this laying around for years so it's not like it's a big deal. I think I'm going to try to utilize this as, as uh, much as I possibly can. I just got to engineer up a way to uh, mount this bad boy. So, hmm. yeah, that's my conundrum right now, is mounting this thing and making it look good. So I want to make it look good. I want this fit and finish to be, to be very nice. I think I'm going to go ahead and start cutting the holes in my buckets, just drilling a hole. Now I'm using uh, a regular end uh, for a hose, a quick disconnect, and then using an end cap for a, uh, for a, for a nut on the back. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about there. Um, but yeah, let's cut frame and, and go over to uh, maybe some other work while I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to mount this up. All right, so the next step of the project, um, I'm going to prep these uh, quick disconnects we're going inside my buckets. So these quick disconnects I got at Lowe's. I think they're like two dollars a piece, two ninety eight or something like that. Um, so these are going to go inside my buckets, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna I think I'm gonna put RTV on them. I might do some epoxy. Um, I've had better luck with RTV because it flexes a little bit. Epoxy will will break out if it if it gets stressed. So. Since I talk about everything on my videos, um, I use for a utility knife, I use a carpet knife. So this is a, you find these at Lowe's Home Depot. Uh, this is a button carpet knife that uh, you can find back in the carpet section, back in the flooring and all that. It's not near any of the other uh, knives or utility things or um, where the, I don't have any of the other knives. So the ones that are pointy on the end, uh, these square carpet blades, you can get them in boxes of 100, and they're fairly cheap. So when you're done, you wear it out, just throw it away. But it has four sides to it, so I can put it, I can put it in however, however I want. Close it. It holds uh, three or four blades in the handle, and it's always ready to go. So I just uh, break it open, pull my next blade out, and put it in the in the thing, and I'm ready to go. So very sharp. These do not discriminate, so you have to be careful because it is sharp on both sides. So as long as you get used to using it, I don't use any other uh, utility blade. So Robert's um, utility knife, carpet knife, awesome tool to have. All right, so this is what I'm going to do. So this this uh, end cap, all right, goes on here like this. I'm going to use this as my nut on the inside of my bucket. So this is going to thread into, I'm going to drill the hole just big enough for this to thread into the hole in the bucket. It's going to go all the way in, then I'm going to use this on the inside, it has a little rubber o-ring, and I'm going to drill a hole through the end cap for my water to come out. But I'm using this as a nut to tighten it down on the bucket and squeeze all the sealant together and keep it tight. So this has a little plastic collar on it, so to keep it tight against the bucket, it has sealant around it. I'm going to tighten this down 
and tighten it down on my bucket and that will hold my bung in there so it doesn't uh, move around. If there was going to be if there was never going to be any movement on the bucket then I would probably just use this thread it into the bucket with some sealant on it and call it a day. But since there's going to be stress I'm going to be unplugging and plugging um, a cap on here. So like I was talking about when I get it through my bucket or when I when I take my bucket off of the off of the cart I want to be able to uh, use it as a regular bucket so I'm going to put a, a quick disconnect on here. I thought I had one already set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a quick disconnect that has this end plugged. So this end is going to be plugged and then it's going to go over that and it's going to be a plug on the end of my on, the, on my bucket so I can use it. And then when I come back to the cart, then I can snap it back in. Obviously, water's gonna drain out while you're using it if you already have it filled up. So just as easy as that, I'll put a little end to, or uh, a little plug on that end and it'll be all she wrote. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a hole through my end cap. I want to retain as much as I can with uh, uh, support that o-ring in there so we're not cutting the whole back of the of the cap out we're just cutting the middle so I'm thinking about a half inch hole I'm gonna see what drill bit works the best so if I do a half inch hole um, that's probably gonna be pretty darn good and a half inch hole should fill my bucket pretty fast um, anything above half inch you're gonna go to a spade bit so when you're cutting into this plastic with a spade bit you're just gonna end up breaking it or snapping it. So we'll just go ahead and do a regular bit here. So this is an old vise that I've had around forever. I think I bought this one in North Carolina at a uh, local private hardware store. I've, weld, I've had to weld the crap out of this vise. Weld it so it doesn't swivel, weld the jaws back on. So I'm going to drill right down the middle of my cap here, or relatively close. Remember, we're not building the Taj Mahal here. It doesn't have to be perfect, but get it close. Ah, come on. Blooper reel, right? All right, so I don't want to put a lot of stress on my cap, but I want to hold it so that I'm not trying to do this by hand. Come on, get my hairs out of here. All right, all right. I'm gonna have to have it a little bit tighter than that. I don't wanna break the cap because it's plastic, but I also wanna hold it so it doesn't go anywhere. We're gonna get that threads off there. All right, so we've broken through. I'm not going to mess with it much more than that. So I'm going in reverse, knocking it down a little bit. All right. You'll know when you're close, you'll break through. Just like that. All right, so that allows a hole in there. I still have my O-ring intact, and I have it so that I can screw this bad boy on there and keep it nice and tight and I still have a hole that's going to fill with water. Um, you can imagine, you saw how hard it was to just do it with a regular bit. Um, if you did it with a spade bit any bigger than that, it would have been a nightmare. It would have been catching all kinds of weird. So um, that's how I did that. So we'll go ahead and uh, I am gonna use a, a spade bit on the buckets. So we'll go over, we'll cut the hole in the bucket. I, I will probably just make it big enough so that I have to thread this past and then we're gonna put this on here with some RTV around it and let it dry, let it cure, do all three of my buckets. So while I'm waiting on those to dry, I can do the rest of the project. So let's go over and, and uh, do some bucket work. All right, so I'm gonna show you exactly how I cut this uh, hole in the bucket for my, for my bung. So I'm using a Bosch auger bit. Um, you need to go really slow. This is a one inch bit so that it will thread my bung will thread right into the side of the bucket. So go nice and slow. I think I'm gonna drill right around here. No method to the madness. We're not building the Taj Mahal. All right, what I do, what am I, 
what I did right there was break the break the threads out of the bucket so that I can control the depth. This is threaded, so as I pull down in through here, it'll just pull me right through the bucket until it snaps the thing. So I went ahead and bucked against the threads to get, get them to uh, let go. All right, now I can go through at my own pace here. Turn the bucket like this. All right, see, way too fast. Let's try this again here. Go nice and slow here. So it tore the bucket a little bit weird. I'm gonna try to get this cleaned up here. All right. So got my got my bung hole here. Right. Now, hopefully that looks good on camera. So we're gonna test to screw this in here. Put a little bit of pressure with the threads. See if we can get this started here. All right. So as you can see, it's a little crooked. You kind of just got to mess with it until you can get it started, and it go in there semi straight. dealing with plastic so you don't really have to be that. So the threads have nothing to do with the, the actual um, sealing of the bucket. We're, that's what we're using RTV for. So once we get in into the uh, bottom of the threads where basically the threads are on the inside, all we're doing is threading this cap on the back of it to tighten it down. So I'll show you what I do now since I got the thread started. I'll go ahead and bring them back out get this turned back out here. All right, so now I've got that. What I might do is make this a little nicer here with the knife. You want a, a decent area for the, for the RTV to seal on. You don't need you don't need it to be terribly nice, but you want it to be decent. Okay. So now what I'll do, I'm just using Ultra Black because it's chemical resistant. You can use any RTV that you want, but I'm putting a nice thick bead around the bottom of the, of the garden hose fitting here. Nice thick bead. All right, so nice and thick here. Now I'm gonna thread it right back into my bucket where we had our threads before. That's why you wanna just go ahead and set some threads in here because you don't wanna mess with it when the RTV's here and you're trying to screw with it then. So I just leave it out like that. Leave it nice and thick. It really doesn't matter, I mean, you can wipe all this up when you're done, so it really doesn't matter what you're doing here. I'm also going to put a little bit here on the inside of my cap because this is going to be against the against the bucket on the on the inside. So just an extra little little bit. This into this is really not going to going to leak because there's an O-ring, but this in through the threads through the side of the bucket could possibly leak. So what I'm doing is just threading it onto the threads on the inside and tightening it down. So I'll tighten it down as much as I possibly can by hand. And so that'll make it nice and sturdy. So really nice and sturdy to have a bung in the side of your bucket. Just like that. And then, like I demonstrated before, I was talking about, I'll put a plug on this end, and then when I take this, when I take my bucket out of my cart, I will put this on here like this. And then it will, it will be plugged 
so that I don't run into you know it spilling out. So right now I'm going to wipe up all this extra RTV around the outside and then move on to my other bucket and do my other two. So that's how I did that. All right, now we're done in the shop. Uh, I come, I came up with a, a better way to mount this than I was previously thinking. I was thinking about strapping it to the cart. Um, I had some Unistrut that uh, that I had down in the shop, just an extra piece of Unistrut. This is, uh, for those of you who don't know commercial applications, this gets zapped up to the ceiling and then you have all thread come up through here and there's a spring-loaded clamp that uh, you can hang stuff off of. So hang fluorescent lights, mechanicals, all kinds of stuff used mostly in the uh, commercial setting. So Unistrut, I have that sitting there like that. So I'm gonna, I'm going to bolt this down to the actual cart and then I'm going to set this in the Unistrut. So now what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna heavy duty zip tie this together. So it has to be able to be replaced if I want it to be. I don't wanna make it a permanent fixture. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to uh, drill holes in the side, side of this so that my zip tie will go through the side and over the body of this and hopefully hold it with some really, uh, really big zip ties. So I've already marked my holes here. Um, respectively, I want my holes to be around in here somewhere. I'm going to do it on both sides. So let's go over to the drill press and let's go ahead and run, run a hole down either side of this so that we can slip our zip ties in and, and strap it down. So I'll just put a, probably one or two bolts through to the cart with a washer on it, bolt it down nice and tight, put this on and then zip tie through and be done with it. That's all she wrote. So let's go over to the drill press. We'll drill these holes out. All right, so nothing like using an 1800s drill press to do the work that I'm doing right now. So we've got our Unistrut. I've got a, uh, like a 5 16 loaded up here. So we're gonna go ahead and clamp this into place. I'm gonna drill through both sides of this. We're gonna get our table up here. close here. This is aluminum so I'm going to mow right through this pretty much. Mow right through it. We'll go ahead and move this over. Get it to right about where I want it. I think right in there. Let's go ahead and tighten down our table and we'll go ahead and pop this out real quick so I can tighten down my vise to the, the table. Everything's nice and tight. Let's go ahead and put this back in my vise here. Okay, probably something right in there like that. All right, so let's go ahead and drill this bad boy. My luck is that this uh, where I was here with the hand is in the way of the camera and all that stuff, knowing my luck. But you get the gist of it. We went ahead and drilled uh, four holes here and uh, now we can go zip tie this thing in and get this thing attached to the cart. So awesome stuff. All right, so one of the things that I was getting wrapped around the axle about was exactly how I was going to put my buckets on the, on the cart but it really doesn't matter because I'm not, I'm not mounting the buckets to the cart. I'm just having them set down on here so that I can move them around however I want. So if I wanted to move these over here or move two down here and have my two wash buckets on one end and my uh, wheel bucket over here and have some products in between, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to have, I'm going to cut a liter hose in half here do this kind of like this so I have my my connection here 
and then my leader hose is going to go to whatever bucket that I want it to go to. So I'm going to, I'm going to have one here with my sprayer nozzle, remember, and then I'm going to have my other three going into my buckets. So wherever I put my bucket, it really doesn't matter. If I want to move the, move the bucket around, I can do whatever I want. Face the bung whatever way I need it to work the best. So what I did, why uh, off, off camera, I actually forgot to set up the camera and get it going again. Uh, I went ahead and mounted my Unistrut that I, uh, that I cut holes in just a minute ago. I mounted that to my cart. So now I'm going to put my zip ties through here. So I want my zip tie to be as hidden as possible. So I'm going to put this through my holes and then I'm going to put this down through here. And we're going to see how tight we can get this bad boy. Um, actually, I think I'm going to bring this up and over here, have the zip tie on the back. So let's go ahead and finagle it through here. Hopefully this works out decent for what I for what I want. Okay, let's go ahead and pin the other side down real quick. Uh, I was putting it that way. Okay, now let's go ahead and get this side tightened down, get it close, and then we can really talk about wrenching on it here, getting it tightened down. So I might do something like this, put the top of the zip tie up here so that I can really tighten it way down. Okay, and then I might move this one back up. Oh well, it's tight down to where it's not going anywhere. So now, now yeah, whatever. I might leave it there. I might be anal and cut it off. Mm, don't know how I feel about it yet. Might have wasted a zip tie. Uh, but yeah, that makes it really nice and uh, really nice and robust, so I can use all of my valves. That's not too shabby. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut a hole in the corner of the cart here for the leader hose to come through here and into my, into my unit here. That might not work as much as I'd like it to because of this, this little collar, but it might be better to have this little collar protecting the hose. And then I'm gonna have my leader out here so that once again, it's going to be another, it's gonna be a half length. It's only about two and a half feet. So it's gonna come out here, and I'm gonna, I could store it up on the cart or whatever. Um, but uh, I think that I think that uh, hose bugs me to the point, or the zip tie bugs me to the point where I'm cutting this one off. All right, so I'm gonna put a new one on there and do it the same as the other one. I want it to look nice and the same way. Um, it even kind of bothers me that, that this, this uh, four-way valve is weathered. I kind of want it to be new looking, but at the end of the day, like, this stuff, this stuff is going to get worn out anyways. All right. Let's tighten that the rest of the way down. Okay. This is where I'm going to use my uh, red carpet knife and cut these off nice and flush. Cut these off nice and flush here. Be nice and careful. Cut them off clean. And nice little sleek install here with that valve. All right. So now I want to figure out exactly what end I have to put here. It's going to be it's gonna be an end like uh, it's gonna look like this. So I'm just running the. I'm gonna take another leader hose here. Let's unpack. Let's unpack one of these. All right. So this leader hose. I I love I love these Flexzilla hoses. Um, they they don't kink. I mean, a lot of people don't like them because they're so flexible, 
but I love them. They have nice, nice hardware, O-rings instead of those flat washers. Um, really nice connections, really nice hose. I really, really like them. I like the flexibility. So when I want to put them away, I just coil them up. It's not like an old garden hose. It's a pain in the butt. So ultimately this is what this is going to look like. So I'm going to put this in here, tighten this down nice and tight. This is going to go through the cart here in the corner and then ultimately it's going to be cut back here around the halfway mark and then I'm going to have that lead here. So then when I, I plug it into my garden hose and then I've got my I've got my four valves and that zip tie idea really holds it nice and tight. Um, it's kind of surprising that, that that held it that tight so I'm really excited about that. Um, do I need to put a hole in the side of the cart? Probably not, but I think that it would help uh, with the side deflection when you're pulling on the hose or something like that. I want to be able to have it in the cart so that when I'm pulling it around and moving it, I'm not pulling on this these zip ties and this unistrut, and I'm just pulling on um, the cart piece right here. So that's why I'm going to do that. And then as I put my buckets in here, however I want to do them, it's going to work out nicely. So right now. I'm uh, literally just going to cut these hoses in half and I'm going to put a male and female end on them so that I can put my quick disconnects on. So all these little hoses are going to have quick disconnects. A little expensive, yes, but for what I was wanting to do, uh, best option. So let's go ahead and do that.
going, what in the heck is all this? But uh, hopefully it turns out pretty cool when I use it often. So I've got this piece now threaded onto here. This thing will store up here or something like that. And then when I'm ready to use the cart, take it off, hook it into my garden hose. Wow, that thing did not want to go in there. There it is. Got it nice and tight. Now I can turn on my now I can turn on my hose and I can have all these shut off or whatever, tighten it down, put some pressure on it. And it looks like it leaks right there up next to the side of one of the valves. Outstanding, great. So this thing already, it leaks on the valve on the side of this thing. Maybe it just needs a, a little bit of loving. But let's see what, uh, let's see what happens. Let's go ahead and fill some buckets. All right, that's cool. All right. So we're gonna start filling buckets. I'm gonna take you guys around to look at what it does here. All right, so we're filling three buckets at a time. That's cool. So it'll give us a little bit of time to do other things that we wanna do. Like start spraying this car with a, with a cleaner or whatever. And yeah, I've got my three buckets and it hooked up so, and then as I want, I can just turn off one valve turn off the other valve and then fill one bucket faster. Or I can turn it off completely. All right, so now let's put this into practical application. So I've already filled my buckets with soap. Obviously my rinse bucket doesn't get any soap. Um, just hooked it up to the hose. I'm about to wash the truck. So let's go ahead and fill our buckets. Um, we'll get them most of the way filled up while I'm doing other things like spraying wheel cleaner um, and bug zapper on the truck and then we'll foam the buckets up and get to washing. So this is exactly how I'm gonna use it. So now that I've got now that I've got these decently full, now I can take my my spray here and I can foam it. All right, so that basically was allowing me to uh, fill the wash buckets all on their own, and I don't have to babysit them. Uh, it's uh, pretty nifty. Um, I like it. That's how I'm using it. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. This is a, obviously a feature length film, so if you watched it all the way to the beginning, um, good on you. <laughs> you listen to my voice and watch my video for an hour, probably an hour and ten minutes. So, um, if you like my content, go ahead and subscribe. Um, those of you who are this far in the video have already subscribed, so uh, I don't have to tell you that, but smash that like button, um, and I'll see you guys next video.